speaking about robots and speaking about training, I think it'd be good to just right out of the gate. You know, there's a lot of people that don't understand robots. They don't understand automation. They they see, you know, a lot of work of, has gone out of like our country and different things. And, and so, you know, they think robots kill jobs. You know, is there, you know, can you speak to that a little bit? I know oh, yeah. it's not true, but at yep. the same time, I'd love to hear from from you. Yeah, you know that's something. It's something that uh, that we've been talking about and experiencing uh, since we started the company in terms of what robots do. And um, you're right that they don't take jobs, um, but manufacturing is changing in terms of what people do in, within the manufacturing floor. And what we really think that robots can do is is they can help people be more efficient. At what they do. So we're, a lot of places where we see robots, like you're seeing on the screen now, uh, this is a highly automated uh, automotive components company. And uh, they have just as many workers as they did before, um, but they've been reallocated to different areas. Uh, so carrying around heavy metal parts, uh, standing in front of a machine just to load and unload the machine. Uh, a lot of people use robots and automation to help optimize what they're already doing on the floor and make it safer and more efficient. Um, we, uh, I mean, there's just countless uh, examples of people that have automated um, and have uh, and have grown their employment and have succeeded in and doing things locally. You mentioned uh, what's happening in the world today and and the need to produce things locally where they are going to be consumed. Um, a good buddy of mine, Matt, uh, runs a company called Vickers Engineering on the west side of this of Michigan. And, um, you know, he was on the they were on the brink of going out of business because of offshoring where where they couldn't be competitive. And on their, their machine shop, they've got a ton of machines. They were doing parts for a lot of different industries. And we started to help him automate. And um, what he found was is he went he went from about 35 people that they had. Um, they bought a couple robots. They started training those employees, the machinists that they had on their floor on on how to program the robots in addition to, to the machines. Um, everyone on the floor got more efficient, so you could do multiple things. Um, a lot of the, the mach- or a lot of the mechanics that were there that were helping maintain the machines started to learn how to maintain the robots. And next thing you know, he's competitive again to uh, some of the offshoring that was going on. Um, his business goes up from 35 people to 100 people, and then from 100 people to 200 people. And without robots and automation, the answer to that question was zero people. He was going to have zero people because the doors were going to close and everything was going to was going to go away. And now he's 200 plus people strong. He's got robots all over the place. He has one of the most um, educated, highly paid workforces in his part of the country. And now he's actually spun off a, a company where he's teaching other people um, how to automate their things as well. So he started a separate uh, system integrator. Uh, to even go out and help other people to almost almost help his competition succeed in the way that he has. So um, we, we have stories like that all over the place where um, it, robots don't take, take jobs. Um, robots help people transform their jobs into other things. Uh, but you have to ha- you have to look at it with open eyes, you have to, and open arms and, and, and see, see what you can do to accept it. And there's a lot of great companies out there that could help you uh, figure those things out. Yeah, I think that it's a, a good example would be a company like Tesla, right? I mean, you're building cars in the United States of America and um, building phenomenal cars. But if you didn't have robots and you didn't have the automation that he has, which, of course, you need people also, right. uh, it would be an impossible thing to actually build a car in, in America, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially when you look at what uh, what he's done in terms of building the the first, you know, mass produced electric vehicle. There's a lot of things that go into that car that are different than what's been in traditional manufacturing. And so uh, we had folks in there that, uh, you know, they look at a process when you come to see what the battery looks like or to see how that's different compared to it, uh, a regular vehicle. And um, you can you can Google some of these videos and see them. But I mean, we have a robot that can it picks up the whole car. Um, it happens at a lot of the other automotive OEMs now too, but um, because of that process, uh, we needed to work on our designs where we needed to make a robot big enough. They 
they needed they needed a robot that could move the car around once it was almost finished and and we need to make a robot big enough to do that and so fortunately we had one that could uh could physically move the whole vehicle from one spot to another in the middle of the production line so uh, things that could never be done uh, with human labor safely 